Bless me, Father, that I behold the eastern star of wisdom. May it shine before my human eyes as much in daylight as in darkness. Long my eyes were blinded by the tenso glitter of materiality. Seeing things always outwardly, I saw not the spirit behind and within them. I saw the mustard seed of matter, but spied not the oil of spirit that it contained. My third eye of wisdom is now opened. Oh, may it always be so. Let the gaze of my single eye of realization penetrate through every veil of matter to behold the infinite presence everywhere. Om Shanti Shanti. We'll have a song now and then an excerpt from a talk by Swamiji. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. There is a practical teaching in these words, apart from their statement that we have God already and have only to realize that truth. Jesus is saying, lift up your eyes and look. To hold the eyes upward is the best position for meditation. For the seat of superconsciousness lies at a point midway between the eyebrows in the frontal lobe of the brain just behind that point. <coughs> <coughs> this point is known also as the Christ center. By lifting up your eyes and concentrating there, you will find it easier to enter the state of ecstasy. That is why saints in every religion have often been observed during states of deep inner communion with their eyes uplifted, focused on the inner light, white, as Jesus said, already to harvest. The Bhagavad Gita goes further into this meditative teaching. In the sixth chapter it states, holding the spine firm, the neck and head erect and motionless, let the yogi focus his eyes at the starting place of the nose, the point between the eyebrows. Let not his gaze roam elsewhere. In meditation, tell yourself, I have him already. I am alive forever in the divine light. Welcome again, everybody. I want to start with the reading 
uh, Swamiji's words on the spiritual eye. When seen perfectly, it is a halo of golden light surrounding a field of deep blue, in the center of which is a silvery white five-pointed star. When seen imperfectly, it is seen as a dim violet light with a faint circle around it and an even fainter dot in the center. If you see it in meditation, concentrate on the star or in the center of the field of blue. Gradually, the gold will expand and form a tunnel. Passing into the tunnel, you will consciously enter the light of the astral world. In time, the blue light will form a tunnel. Entering that, you will enter the light of the causal world, the cosmic consciousness. When you can penetrate the star, the center, you will enter the spirit beyond creation. This topic of when I, when will I see the spiritual eye? It's a very deep topic and it's a very important one. And I want to explain it today in a way that will inspire you. Because I think a lot of people, uh, they don't have maybe much hope or interest, or maybe desire, I'm not sure, because they're not seeing anything. But there's much more than seeing. And it's a very, very important practice to uplift our gaze and to keep it there as much as possible. In all of our practices, we look up in Hong Sa, in the Om technique, in Kriya, in higher Kriyas, all of the Kriya preparatory practices, the gaze is up. And that we know as the spiritual eye here, between the frontal, the eyebrows, the frontal lobe of the brain, inside in the brain. We call it the third eye, the sixth chakra, the uh, seat of enlightenment, the seat of wisdom, uh, the Christ center, the Krishna center. It's a natural reality. It's something that everybody has. Who We have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, and we have a third eye. There's a feeling that draws us up to that point. And what I'm understanding more and more is that it is the seat of higher consciousness, that for sure. But for the yogi, for the devotee, for the disciple, it is where we want to keep our consciousness as much as possible, because that is the link between us and God, it's the link between us and the masters. It's the link to super consciousness. It's the link to expansiveness, to wisdom, to bliss, to joy. We have to keep our awareness up. Even if we don't see anything, there's something happening. It's, there's a tingling vibration, I'm sure most of you have felt that, or a pulling sensation or an opening sensation, there's definitely a draw to this point as you meditate. It's not uh, a position of the, to be uncomfortable. It's not crossing the eyes or anything like that. It's very natural. And seeing the spiritual eye or feeling it or experiencing, experiencing a higher level of consciousness is so important. and. I'm realizing more and more that if your consciousness isn't up, you're in, you don't have solution consciousness. You're not in attunement with God and gurus. You're not inspired or uplifted or um, feeling uh, like you're a part of in infinity because the, the consciousness, not just the gaze, but our awareness has to be lift it up and so we bless people here at our satsangs we give kriya blessing people here discipleship initiation 
one part of it is Lisa's blessing here. Why? Because we want to always lift and keep our consciousness up at that point. And when we do, we realize that we're getting out of bad habits. We're getting out of delusion. We're getting out of low energy. We're getting out of things that could pull us away from the teachings and the path. We're, we're affirming not only affirming, but we're experiencing who and what we really are. We're experiencing the soul's nature, one with God. And without that upliftment, if you see something, if you don't, your energy is not, um, what can I say, in attunement with God and gurus. And Master showed this. He said, if you can lift your gaze up, everything will go okay. If difficulties come, then it's they they will you'll have a higher state of consciousness where they just don't affect you so much. And he gave the example of um, the wishing well that fell on um, one of his feet. The master said, I will show you now if I lift my consciousness up, which is what lifting the gaze up is about. It's not just looking up, it's putting your focus, your awareness, your attention, your attunement there at the center, at the point between the eyebrows. So as Master did that, even though he was in pain, his body was in pain, when he shifted his consciousness up, then his body wasn't in pain anymore. Then when he said, now I'll show you when I bring my consciousness back down, then I'll feel the pain. And Everything in life, if we approach it with the higher consciousness, meaning every day we gaze there after meditation, gaze there longer, do the OM technique so that you can try more and more to cut the sense telephone wires, as I was saying last week, and withdraw in and up and put your gaze at the spiritual eye, sit long and deep. Um, have longer meditations, chant and keep keep your gaze up here at the spiritual eye and all the practices, keep your gaze upward and you will find that afterwards it's there. You don't have to try to bring it up, and let it fall down, it's there. Swamiji said master had them in the ashram to always keep the gaze upward. It doesn't mean you're going around with your eyes up, but you're, you're going with the consciousness of upliftment after your meditation. And if you feel, the thing is, there's delusion all around. This is the light in the darkness. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light, it says in the Holy Bible. And what does that mean? Your consciousness will be filled with light. And any darkness, it just can't touch you as much. And so we shouldn't just aim for a I'm looking for light. I have to see the light. It's the consciousness. And even if you see just a little bit, sometimes you see more, sometimes you don't, but whatever, keep the consciousness there. And you will find that delusion just can't touch you nearly as much, maybe not at all. But if you're not centered there, you're centered in worries and problems and old bad habits and, and there's so many things i see it every day with people you don't have to go through that master said it's a self-created darkness and you don't have to go into that darkness and the darkness shineth the light and the light that light is always within you and what is it it's a guiding light it's master's light it's babaji's light it's divine mother's light and through through that light, through the vibration, through communion, we're communing with God when we look there. Light is an aspect of God. And so you're communing with an aspect of God, just like if, if it were peace or joy, it's light. And as you gaze there, you become more and more like that light. The light shines more and more brightly within you. Now, that's not... The main thing, though, it's consciousness. We have to get away from I, this, didn't, this isn't this, this isn't that. No, it's consciousness. The consciousness is uplifted. Every time you meditate with the gaze upward, offering yourself to God, the consciousness is uplifted. And 
karma is burned up and old habits go away and um, emotions are released and you're just above the conscious level is problem oriented. The super conscious level is what you're reaching when you gaze upward. When you look there, then you're you're reaching up towards God, towards solutions, toward inspiration, toward help. And how do we look there? Where well, you simply look up and outward, just as if there were a mountain top, and you're gazing at the top of that mountain. It's not looking in, looking cross-eyed, looking down. It's just gently, slightly up. There's a natural feeling there. And I don't know if I can show you properly here, but you can bring your arm out. Yeah, I can show you. And then just about 45 degrees up with the thumb up. And just look at the thumb with your eyes open first, bring your hand down and then close the eyes, but keep the gazes just slightly upward. And you can have the eyes closed or you can have them slightly open, whichever you prefer. But this is a very important practice. And also at night before you go to sleep, you can just uh, cover your eyes with your hands and just try to see the light and the darkness. Before you get up in the mornings, you can cup your hands over the eyes and just try to see. I mean, we're just looking there. When you're more quiet, when you're more still, it's easier to feel. The, the feeling is the forerunner of seeing the light, typically. Some people see light. Some people never see light. But there's certainly a feeling that people have. It may help you to wear an eye mask when you meditate so that you can shut off all the light outside and be able to see the inner light more. These are things you'll have to work with. But what I want to emphasize today is it's not only seeing light, it's consciousness. It's uplifting consciousness. There's a feeling there of moving inward, away from the senses, away from the world, away from materiality, away from all the things that distract you. There's like Swamiji described in this reading, it's a opening a golden ring with that becomes a tunnel of light now you may go a little bit into that you may not but most people see something at least a, a little glimmer of light master said that becomes a tunnel and you start moving into that now you don't typically you don't go into that completely it, first time around very rarely and then the ocean of blue light that blue light becomes a tunnel of blue. And so here's the thing, whatever you see, just enjoy it. Don't analyze and try to figure out, just be there. And then in the middle of that blue is a silvery white five-pointed star. Um, now that's difficult to see, but see whatever you can see or feel, just enjoy it, go into it um, and pray for grace that it, it becomes deeper, a deeper and deeper experience for you. The spiritual eye is an experience of God. You want to go into that experience. You may not go into a whole heart, the whole part of it right away. It takes time. But step by step, like going into the ocean for a swim, just see how cold the water is and walk in a little further, then go in further, then go in further. And just enjoy that wonderful feeling. Also, if nothing's happening, you're, you're getting a blessing. Master guides you from your attunement at the spiritual eye. He blesses us from our openness and receptivity at the spiritual eye. The saints and masters come to us from our openness at the spiritual eye. And so it's a deep blessing to have this teaching, to be able to know where to look, how to look, how long to look to be able to go into the experience of the spiritual eye. Keep that in mind, it's an experience. It's not just a light, it's an experience of joy. It's an experience of light and color. It's an experience of vibration. It's an experience of blessing. It's an experience of guidance, hearing, feeling the master's guiding you. If you go at it that way, I think you'll get a lot more from it. 
And I'll close with a couple of wonderful experiences that happened. Master's nephew, Hare Krishna Ghosh, told this and his stories of Ma with Master that his mother and aunt, uh, Master's sisters, were wanting some experience of God. And um, this is when Master was back in India in, uh, during that time, 35, 36. And first he said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And, but they kept after him. So he said, all right, all right. So there were a lot of people in the room and Master told everyone to leave the room. And then he said to Hare Krishna, who was, I believe he was like 15 at the time. He says, Hare Krishna, you stay here and turn off the light and shut the door. And so then Master sat in front of the sisters and Hare Krishna was sitting next to him. And Hare Krishna describes that Master said some few slokas and something he didn't understand. And then um, he saw his mother's face just just very different, just light over her face. And um, then after a while, Master said, okay, Hare Krishna, go turn off the light and open the door. And so Hare Krishna did it. He came back and he said, um, he saw his mother was just completely changed, just transformed. He said, mother, what did you see? And she said, I just can't describe it to you how beautiful it was. And she couldn't even talk. And then afterwards, Master said, I've shown your, your mother and your aunt, Bhagavad Jyoti, the light of God. Such a beautiful story of Hare Krishna. And this other one, this actually happened with Master. It's good to be inspired by these things. The grace of God, more than I think anything, will help us to go into these experiences of God. So this was another man uh, who was at a class of masters. He says, when we were nearing the end of the third course of lectures, lectures, we were told that anyone who had attended all of the three courses and desired to do so could attend an extra class to see the divine light. When Swami Yogananda appeared, he directed that the lights be lowered. He stated that he wanted no one to say that he or she had seen the light unless such a person was definitely certain that the light had actually be, been seen. When my turn came, Yogananda placed the tips of his little fingers over my ears and his thumbs near but not touching my closed eyes. At first, I felt nothing. After a minute or two, Yogananda asked if I had seen the light. I answered no. Several times more this occurred. I kept my eyes closed in proper position, looking upward at the center of my forehead, but all was dark. Suddenly, I sensed a great wave of power flowing down from Yogananda, who was standing over me. A great scintillating light appeared, and there were, quote unquote, the wings of the dove, the spiritual eye. I did not lose my perception. I gazed directly at the center of the light. It was a most beautiful and inspiring sight, a feeling of utter and absolute peace and well-being filled me with ecstasy. I held my gaze on the light, although it was very bright and scintillating. I did not stir when I said I had seen it. Yogananda left me for the next class member. For two or three days after that, I could still see a spark of light there when I closed my eyes. And of course, we know the story of Master who, with Dr. Lewis, Dr. Lewis came to him saying that he read in the Bible the quote that I said, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. And he asked Master, he said, do you know what that means? And Master said, it was his first meeting with him. And Master said, I think so. And he said, have you seen that light? And Master said, I think so. He said, can you show it to me? And Master said, I think so. So he had Dr. Lewis sit on the floor in front of him, cross-legged, 
Master was sitting on the floor there and he brought his forehead to Dr. Lewis's forehead and the great light there appeared. And first he asked doctor a very important question though, I think we have to keep in mind. He said, doctor, will you love me always as I will love you? He didn't, it was his first meeting. Dr. Lewis said he didn't know what to say, but he felt something from master and then finally said, okay, master said, all right, now I can take charge of your life. Once he took charge of his life, he showed him that light. I like to close with a meditation, uh, very brief, but uh, this is a meditation on the spiritual eye. So close your eyes, gaze at the point between the eyebrows, Visualize there a tunnel of golden light. Mentally enter that tunnel. Feel yourself surrounded by a glorious sense of happiness, of freedom. As you move through the tunnel, Feel yourself bathed by the light until all worldly thoughts disappear. After soaring through the tunnel, as long as you can do so, feel, visualize before you a curtain of deep violet blue light. Pass through that curtain into another tunnel of deep violet blue light. Feeling the light surrounding you. Slowly, the tunnel walls disappear in blue light. Expand your consciousness into that light, into infinite freedom and bliss. Now there's no tunnel. There's only an all-encompassing blueness and bliss of the infinite. At last, visualize before you a silvery white five-pointed star and surrender every thought, every feeling and to that star of absolute, ever existing bliss. Mentally affirm I awaken thy light. I awaken thy light. I am joyful. I am free. I awaken thy light. Om Shanti Shanti. We'll post this meditation in the chat so you can use it on your own. I'll ask Nitendra to join me on the screen now for a couple of questions. Thank you so much, Anaji, for the deep meditation as well. Just um, we have short time, so I'll just ask a couple of questions, Anaji. Okay. The first one, during meditation, I get some sensations around the spiritual eye. Sometimes I feel tingling or energy at the top of the head as well. Mm -hmm. And also at the spiritual eye. So is this normal and should I continue to focus there? Yeah, it's very normal. And Swamiji taught us that you have to go through the spiritual eye, the sixth chakra to the seventh. This will open naturally. We don't meditate on the top of the head. It can even be dangerous, he said. We meditate here and a subtle channel will open up at the top of the head. So you will feel, most people feel something, uh, a vibration, a tingling, a pulling here. You may feel a pulling here, a tingling on the top of the head, but don't focus here. This is the doorway to the seventh chakra. And you don't want to 
go in the way that it could be dangerous. We're meaning that there's steps to these things. You don't just go into a headstand, do you? You know, you have to learn other postures and you stretch your body out. And so you don't just go run a marathon. So you have to go step by step. That's what we were taught from Swamiji. Anything else? Yes, Janaji, just one more question. So can I also focus on the spiritual life while going about my daily life so that yeah. I have more? Uh, yeah, I think, I think Nitendra, that's the point that we all have to learn that more. Just keeping the gaze upward, not the gaze, but the consciousness. You can't go at your job like this, but you can certainly feel the consciousness here. And I think... Try with something that you do, like when you're giving a class. Now, where do I feel my consciousness? I'm not looking up, but my consciousness is definitely right here. And other things that you may do when you chant, when you sing or whatever, where is your consciousness? It shouldn't be low. It should be high. So just keep it. The more you meditate and look there, the more it's going to be there anyway. The more you have low energy, moods, depression, and heaviness, your energy is not going to be there. It's going to be low. And so we're lucky. We have first, we have a Hongsa, we have Om, we have energization, we have Kriya prep, we have higher Kriyas. We have all these techniques that keep our gaze and our consciousness up. And when that's happening there, you go to work and you're, you're uplifted. Your consciousness is uplifted and you get in some mood or whatever, just maybe sit for a few minutes and just gaze up. You know, you'll find that once this is open more and more, naturally the energy rises up. And you, even with the eyes not looking up in meditation, your consciousness is uplifted. Thank you, energy. One last question, short one, energy. If I do not feel any sensation at the spiritual eye, am I still progressing? Well, I hope that this class would help people to understand that, that you are. I mean, could you say that if I don't meditate well every day, am I still progressing? Definitely you are. It takes time, but most people start feeling something there at first. Um, and then little by little, but I know Swamiji said some people don't just don't see it. Some people hear more. They might hear Om more. Some people are more feeling. Their hearts more open. Some people are more visual. They see the light more. Some people, you know, it's just some people have it all happening. But I say go through the door that's open. If you're hearing the Om and it's wonderful, enjoy that. Don't say, I don't want Om. I want light, you know. I don't want light. I want the heart. It just... Divine Mother's blessing you and the gurus. And once you get in the door, everything opens up, little by little. But uh, whatever is happening, go with that and enjoy that. And surely you will, you'll be open enough then for other things to begin to happen too. I hope this was helpful. Okay, God bless you all. Bye, Natendra. Thank you. Bye-bye.